The Pittsburgh Steelers are one-point favorites for Sunday's game against the Los Angeles Chargers. If you want to get in on the action, betonline.ag is the place to do it. You can use our promo code on your screen right now. That's B-L-E-A-V to get started over at betonline.ag. Bet online, the game starts here. Welcome into Believe in Steelers, flying solo. My name is Mark Bergen, getting you ready for Steelers and Chargers for Sunday. And we're going to start with the quarterback position. Justin Fields due to get his third start for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're still saying that Russell Wilson's dealing with the calf injury. And while that may or may not be true, Fields is going to get the going to get the start. And really, to me, you could say, well, Mark, the Steelers have scored two touchdowns offensively through two games. It hasn't looked a whole lot different than the last year, the last few years when the team has struggled. But this is the biggest difference. I'm going to share this with you. And I saw this on Twitter. I'm going to give a shout out and credit where credit is due to Allegheny Andy with these stats. Points per game is actually down through the first two games this year compared to a year ago. But go all the way down and look at T.O.P., and that's time of possession. The Steelers have had the ball for 68 minutes through the first two weeks of the season. They had the the ball for more than 32 minutes this past week, and then in week one, they dominated time of possession as well, had it for more than 35 minutes. That is the key in keeping the defense off the field and their offense on the field. And to me, what that is, is it's – Justin Fields' running ability. I don't know if Russell Wilson in year 13 coming off a calf injury can run around the same way to where if it's not there, he can run the ball. We haven't seen anything super prolific when it comes to Justin Fields, at least for plays that actually count. But what I mean by this is when it's not there, he can take off and run, get five to 10 yards at a time, and it keeps the clock moving and it keeps your defense off the field. So it's the time of possession, and then it's winning the turnover battle. No turnovers for the Steelers' offense through two weeks. I want to see points just as much as the rest of you, but you've won the takeaway in the turnover battle 5-0 through two weeks. Time of possession and turnovers. And that's why this offense has been not great, but good enough to where you're 2-0 atop the AFC North when the Browns are 1-1, and and both the Ravens and the Bengals are 0-2. That's like a death sentence in the NFL. I'm not saying it's impossible to make the playoffs 0-2. The Bengals just did it in recent years, but the odds are against you, and the odds say either the Ravens or the Bengals are going to miss the playoffs this year, if not both. And I think if you would have talked to most NFL fans, not most Steelers fans, but most NFL fans before the start of the year, they would have taken either Cincinnati or Baltimore to win the AFC North going into this year. And I know we're only through two weeks. A lot can change. But that's what I've seen from the Steelers offense in Justin Fields. And I think Mike Tomlin's done a masterful job saying we're not going to get into hypotheticals. I don't know the extent of Russell Wilson's injury. And I know a calf injury can linger. We talked about it with Dr. David Chow here on Believe in Steelers. And I'd rather have Russ ready to go later on in the season. Reason being, last year the Steelers played three quarterbacks. Last year Joe Burrow got hurt. The Bengals played multiple quarterbacks. Deshaun Watson in Cleveland. I know Lamar Jackson is coming off his MVP season, but the year before that, he dealt with injuries. You look across the AFC North division as a whole, you're going to likely need multiple quarterbacks throughout the course of the season. I'm not wishing injury upon Justin Fields. If he's 2-0, you continue to start him. But how this plays out was going to be one of the most fascinating storylines in the league, considering both Fields and Wilson are both on one-year contracts, prove-it contracts this season. And at what point does it start to leak out? Does Russell Wilson start to leak out his own narrative? Something to watch in Pittsburgh. No doubt about that. No doubt about that. But you stick with the status quo for now, at least for another week in week three against the Chargers. One o'clock kickoff for Sunday. And I also want to talk about Broderick Jones getting benched in Denver And Mike Tomlin was pretty blunt about this on Tuesday, saying that he wanted to play both tackles because he wasn't sure about first-round draft pick Troy Fautanu's conditioning. Remember, in Denver, you've got the higher elevation, meaning your cardio has to be sick. You have to have really, really good cardio to play up in Denver. And three penalties on a single drive for Broderick Jones. I don't care what level of football that is. I would expect any player to get benched if you have three penalties on a single drive against one single player. 
drive killers and you can't have those self-imposed mistakes time and time and time again. Mike Tomlin also said that Broderick Jones compared to Dan Moore Jr., compared to Troy Fautano, who is well-equipped at playing both the right tackle and left tackle position. The Steelers are still training him to do both. Eventually, you want to see Broderick go over to the left side where Dan Moore Jr. is right now, who's warded off competition time and time and time again, and then start Fautano, your first-round pick out of Washington, because Dan Moore Jr. is in the final year of his deal, and likely Pittsburgh's not going to want to pay him beyond this year. Because it's serviceable at the left side. It hasn't been elite. I wouldn't say he's a top 10 left tackle, but he's definitely worth being a starter. He doesn't get hurt. And so he's going to get paid this offseason. How the Steelers play that out. I would get Broderick Jones healthy, still wearing that arm brace. Steelers haven't mentioned anything with injuries, but for how much padding he has on the right side, I think that's a factor. I think the muscle memory of having to try to learn both things versus having to just to do one, I think that's a factor. And that's not to make excuses, but you want to make sure that with your first round pick and Broderick Jones, who I thought looked good a year ago, that you get him back on track. I'd get him healthy. I'd get him right. And maybe benching helps him in the long run. But right now, that doesn't look good. Right now, that does not look good. But again, three penalties on a single drive. What would you expect this coaching staff to do? And I would make sure he's healthy and right to where when he gets his opportunity again, he makes the most of it. Because again, I thought maybe other than Isaac Sayamalu, that Broderick Jones a year ago was the Steelers' best offensive lineman, even as a rookie. And Sayamalu's working his way back from a pectoral injury. He's missed the first two weeks. We'll see if he can go against the Chargers at the guard position. In my opinion, he's like the Steelers' best offensive lineman, Isaac Sayamalu. So that's how I see that playing out. I would expect Dan Moore Jr. and Troy Fautanu to start this week against the Chargers. That's what I anticipate to happen. We will see. Mike Tomlin didn't say which player he would start between Fautanu and Broderick Jones at the right tackle position. Keep an eye on that come Sunday. Keep an eye on that come Sunday. How this team's going to try to slow down Justin Herbert. And we're talking about one of the NFL's better quarterbacks. And I I said this after first uh, the first two weeks of the season in that I think that this year's Steelers defense is the best since I started hosting Believe in Steelers in the 2019 season. I, I think that highly of this defense through two weeks. But the reality is, is that you played Kirk Cousins, who's a bit of a statue back in the quarterback, and you played a rookie in Bo Nix in week two. How do you stack up against a quarterback who's a lot better and well – Weapons like Keenan Allen and Austin Eckler are on different teams now. They look pretty good, and they enter this game 2-0 and as well. And to me, I credit the Jim Harbaugh effect with this offense and what Greg Roman has done. And you, we were saying Los Angeles Chargers. The Steelers have had a good job and have fared well against the Ravens the last several years. And why am I talking about the Ravens? Mark, the Steelers are playing the Chargers. The... Chargers have Greg Roman as their offensive coordinator, the longtime offensive coordinator for the Ravens, and then J.K. Dobbins, who's having a nice start to the year, and Gus Edwards are the running backs, two players who spent their entire careers before this season in Baltimore. So the Steelers are very familiar with both of those players. And then schematically, what Greg Roman wants to do offensively, something that the Steelers are very attuned to going into this Week 3 matchup. And again, you're going to have among the NFL's best, uh, Josh Palmer on the outside as well at the receiver position. I'd imagine you put Joey Porter Jr. on him. But Justin Herbert hasn't missed a beat without all these weapons that the Chargers lost. And now they're going to try to just run the ball. And that's all they're going to try to do. Well, run the ball and that set play action up for Herbert. And we're talking about a lot of other young quarterbacks who've had struggles in this league, 2-0 and to start the year. And that's why you bring in Jim Harbaugh to say, hey, we've got a stud quarterback. Let's get this guy right at the quarterback position. That's what Pittsburgh's going to have to try to stop. Pittsburgh's penalty problems is also something that needs to be addressed. This week, the Steelers are bringing in referees for the practices Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Typically, they only do this once a week. I believe on Fridays, Mike Tomlin said, during his media availability on Tuesday, to try to get the penalty is right. The Steelers enter week three as the second most penalized team in terms of number of penalties in the entire league. That's not acceptable. That is not acceptable for the Pittsburgh Steelers. 
They had nine penalties in week one and 10 penalties in week two. So I credit this coaching staff for being proactive to try to get that addressed. You don't want to beat yourself, and it hasn't cost Pittsburgh through the first two weeks of the season. Uh, A lot of those were holding penalties up front offensively. I know Joey Porter Jr. in the defensive backfield had had a few penalties as well. I'm okay with that when you're trying to slow down a number one because I look at what Joey Porter Jr. did a week ago against Cortland Sutton. Sutton had one catch the entire game, and I'd argue he's Denver's best player. So they are going to happen, but you don't want to have them do it shoot you in the foot. And that's what the Steelers, that's something I'd want to see shored up this week is limiting penalties against the Chargers. Another thing to keep an eye on is Joey Bosa off the edge, the edge rusher. They've got Killel Mack and Joey Bosa, as good a duo as as there is in the league. Uh, I think, you know, TJ Watt and Alex Smith are certainly in that conversation. Bosa, though, only played 14 defensive snaps a week ago. Uh, The Chargers didn't really need it against the Carolina Panthers. The Carolina Panthers aren't very good. But keep an eye on that. He's limited at all. Uh, Again, a really, really good edge duo and Dan Moore Jr. Uh, and if it's Troy Fautano or Broderick Jones at right tackle, again, I expect it to be Fautano. You've got your hands full. So you got to chip off the edge. You got to help out with the tight end. You've got to keep an eye on both of those players because they can absolutely just wreck games. Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa can just absolutely wreck games if you are not careful with that. So keep an eye on that. And it's it's the Jim Harbaugh effect compared to Brandon Staley. You know, it, it, this is something that is going to be a storyline. If the Chargers are really good and even a playoff ge- uh, team this year, keep an eye on Coach of the Year for for Harbaugh. Keep an eye on that for 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 Jim Harbaugh. So those are the things I'm looking at going into this game. Uh, again, Steelers are one point favorites, home opener, Acrisure Stadium. And let me know what you think in the comments of what you think is going to happen. This being a Steelers podcast and starting the season 2-0, and I'd expect the Steelers to continue their winning ways. I'm curious to see how this offense performs at home with the home crowd. On the road, there's a little bit less pressure on you. Can you continue to move the ball? Can you continue to get the ball to George Pickens offensively? And Pickens, I think, is having a really nice start to the season. Had a great week one. While the stats might not have been there in week two, He affected the game just in terms of the attention that he garners and then the penalties that he draws. If you tack those stats on in terms of yardage to his receiving totals, I swear he's had so many big dynamic plays called back already, and we've only been through two weeks of the season. You had that rollout where he made a downfield uh, catch where Justin Fields was on the move, an incredible throw gets brought back because of a Broderick Jones penalty. Or even had a touchdown earlier on the pick play with Van Jefferson called offensive pass interference. So keep an eye on that and uh, let me know what you think Sunday. My name is Mark Bergen. This is another edition of Believe in Steelers. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast, five stars and five stars only. Apple and Spotify on YouTube. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'll be live on this channel immediately after Steelers and Chargers on Sunday. So tune in to the Believe in Steelers postgame show. My name is Mark Bergen. Enjoy. The rest of your weeks, Sunday, Steelers, Chargers. I'll see you Sunday. Until then, take care. So long, everybody.